All right, welcome to my midnight show talking about batteries. It is time to load test my battery here. This is a uh, 36 volt uh, MH1. These are scooter batteries. Uh, I, bit, I built this 12 kilowatt hours, right? And uh, you can see the videos of me talking about this uh, the previous days in my channel here. Uh, I wanna load it up. I'm not gonna be able to load it up the way I wanted to. I wanted to load it up to with 4,000 watts of grid tie inverters, but as it turns out, I don't have all the inverters that I need. They didn't get here on time. Uh, they will be here on time for me to, you know, put these, box, these, these cells there on the box and then install it, but they're not here on time for me to do this test, right? So. What I'm gonna do is load it up with 3,000 watts, um, right? Because this is what I have right now, 3,000 watts. I do have another one in there, but I didn't wanna take it off. It's late. I wanna go home already. So I just wanna put this and load it up for a few minutes and see what it does. This uh, 3,000 watts, uh, man, I should've done the math. Uh, I think it's gonna be somewhere around 75 amps on all of these stuff here right and so i want to make sure that all of this stays right so i mean this eventually is going to see up to a hundred watts i mean a hundred amps of load at 36 uh volts right uh i think today we're going to load it up with 75 we're going to put the thermal camera see what heats up right can the six of these cables carry a hundred amps or do I need four? Or do I need eight? Yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll see, right? Uh, this battery is fully charged. It is a little bit in balance. Uh, group number five here is a little bit high. Look at that, 4.2. And all the other ones are 4.15, right? So 69 millivolts difference there. Uh, these numbers right here, the, 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 the black and the red, that means that everything is being balanced uh, and everything's going to be try to match the, red, the black one here. So 4.14. Of course, right now, since we're going to start this load test, then of course that's going to that's gonna mess with that thing, right? But uh, if this was just there... You know, we can leave this there uh, and these little guys do its work. It's going to take a long time. These are just a huge battery, but it will eventually do it. It will take a long time, but eventually we'll do it. So um, we don't want to do it. So let's do the test. Let's, let's do this. Here we go. 41.47 volts. Let's start turning these guys in here. All right. Here we go. Here's the first one. Is that thing on? Run. I think it takes a little while to go. Here we go, see? It's uh, the little thing it says is running. Is it gonna run? Oh, there we go, 30 amps. This is a quiet one. Oh yeah, by the way, uh, of course, the safest load that exists is obviously the grid. I don't have a 3000 watt load here that I can run this late and not make a bunch of noise. So of course, we're just dumping all this power into the grid. Look at that, 29 amps. Okay, so it's gonna be about 60 amps, I guess. Let's turn on another one here. There we go, does that say error? That does say error. Hold on, and then it says run. Okay, that one's ramping up. Ramping up. Here we go. Look at those cells are like at 37 amps, 38, 40, 42, 50 amps. There we go, 55, 58. And look at those, they're not even seeing anything. They're all staying at uh, 4.10, they're all staying at 4.10, so uh, 40 volts, 40 point, it went down like one volt, 
less than one volt, right? At 60 amps there. What's happening here? Nothing. This is nothing. No, nothing's happening. Let's turn on another one. Man, I think I am gonna need another one of these guys. Another one of these so that we can load it up to 120 amps. Here we go. 62, 65, 71, 80 amps. 90. Whoa. Okay. Ooh, jeez. Look at that, that's uh, 89, 90 amps. What's happening there? The cells went down to 4.0, almost 4.1, all of them are around 4.1, 40.5, at 88 amps. Wow, these things are super quiet. There's like absolutely nothing here. Let me check on these guys. Nothing's getting hot on the AC side, on the DC side. Now, yeah. that's, uh, I do feel, I do feel these cables are uh, kind of shaking. What, you can, you can feel the electricity going through these cables. Is that crazy or what? Yeah, you could totally feel like there's some rattling in there. Um, is that weird or what? There we go. These are starting to get a little warm. Oh, this one's, this one's, this one's almost hot. Cause this one's the one that's gonna, has been there the longest. Wow, let's, should we throw on the, let's, let's throw on the, uh, the thermal camera. All right, here we go. This fans just started. Look at that. You can see those are the three inverters there at 40 degrees Celsius. That one there. So the hottest thing is those cables there at 40, you know. That one's at 50. Ooh, let's go look at that one. What's that one? Oh, that's that single connector. That one is seeing... Uh, what is that thing seeing? That's probably seeing like 50 amps right there. So it's, it's hot. Ooh, 60 degrees Celsius. That might not... That might not... Uh, and then what, what else over here? Yeah, that's the connector where is, there's a bottleneck there because I'm using two cables going into one. Although, look at this one. This one, does, it, does this one seem to be doing the same thing? Uh, not as bad. I think that one in particular is bad. At 60 degrees Celsius there. Uh, I might need to check that one and see if it's like loose or something. But there we go, look at all those cables. Oh, here we go, look at that. That seems to be a hot spot right there too. 38. I wonder why that is. That's the center of the pack. This one seems to be cool. And then the last one over there, let's see. Okay, now these fans are going. These guys are uh, starting to get hot there. Uh, whoa, what's happening over there? Oh, that one says what? It got... Oh, that one's just saying uh, that uh, it's balanced. <laughs> there we go, look at that. How about the AC side? Ooh, that one right there is hot. 36. Ooh, that one's, that one's uh, warm. That's warm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like about the same temperature as my hand. I know it looks really hot here on the thermal camera, but it's not, it's 
it's not that bad. So I just need to keep an eye on that. The this is all the. Uh, this has uh, 20 amp uh, breakers on this circuits right here. So if we exceed the 20 amp, which is about four kilowatt, then it'll it'll trip. But we're not. We're what are we at right now? What are we putting out? We're putting out 85 amps, which is 3.3 kilowatt. 3.3 kilowatt. Let's let's look at it from this other side. There we go. Yeah, that one cable over there is hot. We gotta do something about that. I'm just, uh, I need to run one cable straight to each. Yeah, to each uh, inverter. I guess uh, those 10 American wire gauge uh, can easily handle a thousand watts. But anything more than that, then it starts getting too hot. Let's go look over here. Where are we here? 65, 66, that's hot. Huh? What is that? Oh yeah, that's hot. Maybe I need to discontinue that and fix that. Um, yeah, let's do that. Let's, let's pop. All right, here we go. I have separated each individual of uh, the uh, inverters here to go through their own connector, right? So they have now a 10 gauge connector with a bunch of these other connectors. But, you know, when I install this, uh, you know, permanently, it's not gonna have so many of these connectors, right? But these connectors should be able to handle, you know, up to 90 amps, supposedly. I don't know, uh, without getting too hot. So that's just what I'm seeing here. Uh, definitely running smaller gauge cables, several of them, it's easier than one big giant one, right? Especially since you have to break out uh, and combine so many of these batteries, uh, then you have to start with like smaller gauge cables and then, you know, get to the larger ones. So that's, that's what I'm doing here. I'm trying to figure out if this is uh, an easy way to do this. Uh, definitely probably not super cheap because there's a bunch of these connectors, right? So there's probably cheaper ways of doing this, but you know, maybe, yeah, you'll have to start like soldering big copper stuff and all that nonsense, right? All right, where are we at? 85 amps, 85 amps. And these are holding at 4.05. 4.05 uh, there we go I'll throw the uh, I want to throw the thermal camera and see how this guy is doing here this is what really kind of worries me but it's not even getting warm so I'm thinking that these will do fine these will will be able to carry a hundred 120 amps or something like that that uh, will eventually have on the setup with 4,000 watts. All right, here we go. We're at several, I don't know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes after the test started. These uh, inverters are hot because they're, I mean, they're working at their max. 1,000 watts, right? 3.3 kilowatt right now. So they're a little bit more than 1,000 watts each. And I think the reason is because this battery is keeping its voltage so high. Uh, it barely hit went under thir uh, 40 volts. It's 39.88 volts at 82 amps. And um, obviously, yeah, all the cells are at 4.03 around there. And um, here we go. The thing that I was worried about was the these, right? Because these are um, these are PCBs. And we're trying to run, we're running 82 amps right now through them. So I think I want to run 120 amps through them. And so that is the thing that kind of worries me seeing how hot they're going to run. It doesn't seem like they're going to be a problem. 
these are you know 40 degrees celsius that's nothing that's that's just that's warm right yeah that's warm to the touch that's not really hot it's nothing nothing's gonna melt this is fine this is probably good up to like 150 degrees or something like that but it doesn't doesn't seem like it is right now they're around 80 degrees right that's that's you know a hot day here in california 40 degrees yeah that's that's ambient temperature here uh what are the yeah as opposed to these guys these are at 61 degrees celsius right these are hot is this one hotter than the other ones yeah, they're all about the same, I think. Um, yeah, I think I think it'll be fine. I think we'll be able to run almost up to 200 amps through those uh, DC uh, power strips. That's what we call them. And I have them on the website. We've been selling them for a while. And I build them and I design them just for this, like this application, right? It's just paralleling a bunch of batteries. Um, the the scooter batteries in the in the old days were all of them had the xt60 connectors right and so it was just easier to build these thing and then just uh offer it and i think a lot of people are uh, are building this way we've sold quite a bit of them so here we go now uh i'm doing a little bit further testing last time i tested them up to 80 degrees uh, now I'm, I guess I'm going to be going up past 100 amps, uh, 80 degrees, 80 amps. Now I'm going to be going somewhere around 120 amps and, uh, it's looking good. All right, guys. Uh, this was just a quick, simple test of load test. I suggest when you guys build batteries that you always load test them like that and check with the thermal cameras to see any potential problems right and i suggest you do it in steps sort of like this you do it outside the box before you throw it all in there because then once you throw it inside a metal box then it becomes a little bit harder to see what everything is doing right this is all exposed and it gives you a chance to see at the very least at this level 3000 watts what's it doing you know what's getting hot uh oh nothing much right so now i know that i can run you know four of these cables outside from that box to the outside right a 10 gauge will be fine it'll be those cables will not be getting hot at four kilowatt load the max load that i'm gonna put onto this battery and um yeah that's uh the next steps is to install it in a box put it in the wall put the bms and uh install the uh inverters in there and then next thing is just to run a few cycles and show you how that will work uh using the sense right the uh that whole unit that meters you know the whole the whole thing on your computer and on your iphone and you know the whole thing so this this is gonna be pretty cool i'll be able to show you you know once we have some loads in here like maybe charge my car and then see what that looks like right how much like that looks like like it's coming out of the out of the the utility and then as soon as you turn on you know, the power wall then how much it offsets it and it's how much is coming out of this battery going into the other battery right so you want to offset offload or or shift the peaks so that you don't get charged a bunch of money when electricity is really expensive in places like california hawaii a bunch of states and the united states uh, there's a bunch of places that have time of use uh, and so I'm going to show you how to do this, install this system, and hopefully we're going to be under $2,000, and uh, yeah, it's going to pay for itself like in two, three years, and then after that, it's just going to be making you money, right? So stay tuned for that. It's coming up. This is just a little update. See you guys. Till the next video. Bye.